tatlong gabi, tatlong araw. Mula tabloid hanggang TV network, naibibigay ni Raimundo Mojica ang hinihingi ng kanyang industriya. Nagsimula bilang horoscope writer sa isang tabloid na may pinakamalaking sirkulasyong hanggang maging kilala sa pagiging documentary. Bumalik siya sa kapistahan ng barangay Magapok na magdiriwang ng kanilang tatlong araw na piyesta dahil na rin sa kahilingan ng namatay niyang ina na ilagay ang picture frame sa altar at isaboy ang kaunting abo sa kapatagang napalapit sa puso nito. Pagdating ni Mong kanyang palayaw sa probinsya ng Santa Barbara na nakakasakop sa barangay Magapok, tutumbukin ito ng super typhoon. Nakipag-unahan si Mong sa bagyo para makarating agad ng ligtas sa Magapok. Madaling araw nang makarating si Mong sa Magapok. Sa gitna ng inuman habang buhos ang ulan, nakipagkumustahan sa ilang kababata at kakilala. Kinamusta ang Magapok na may limang taon niyang ring madalas niyang pasyalan, lagian, dahil sa pagiging social worker ng kanyang ina. I'm Eros Atalia from the Philippines. I'm teaching Filipino language, uh, journalism, film production, film theory at the University of Santo Tomas. I write fiction, flash fiction, short story, novels, and screenplays. So far, relatively, we enjoy our freedom with respect to our writing. No more killings, no more assassination, no more torture for the past few years, I guess. If my memory serves me right, uh, that's the best thing. Uh, we can write in the language that we can choose in English or Tagalog in our native languages. We can freely choose either you publish your work online, academic publishing houses or commercial publishing houses. Uh, as of now, uh, we have different narratives in our country with respect to our fiction because uh, I guess after the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos for the past two decades, we are now free to write another form, another genre, or most likely new narratives. And the downside, of course, um, Philippines still in the, in, belong to the third world country. Uh, books are very expensive. Education is very expensive. Uh, I guess almost 30% of our population belong to below, uh, below poverty line. And literature is a kind of middle class sensibilities. So uh, middle, literature is still in the consciousness of the middle class, especially those who reach second or third year college. But uh, Ordinary people will never care about literature because the, the biggest problem of, they have is the food that they bring to the table the next day. The best thing and the worst is the same. We laugh a lot. Uh, we have a great sense of humor. If there is typhoon, uh, if, if, the, if the Europeans will, carry, will, will be bothered about too many flood, too many rain, too many water. The best attitude of the Filipinos, if there is not water, ah, let's do our, do our laundry for free. Water for free. Uh, let's take a bath, let's take a shower, let's swim in the raw sewage, in, in the flood. Uh, we, we tend to laugh ourselves, we tend to ridicule ourselves for other nations, for other people not to ridicule us anymore. We try to oppress ourselves before this international audience so that you will never oppress us again. And that's the worst and the good thing about the Filipinos. Uh, we, I don't know if we're such masochists or what, or we're just really happy people around. Uh, we take one day at a time. We don't take ourselves seriously. Of course, only in the academy will take themselves seriously. Uh, we make fun of almost everything and we enjoy telling stories, not necessarily true stories. Uh, when I write, I feel like six pipes, six five tall with six pack abs and almost looking like Brad Pitt because I feel so superior. I feel this power. I, I can sense that I'm pretty handsome when I'm writing and almost everybody is believing in what I write. I really like writing because um, I can ex extend my stories and, uh, and one way or the other influence people, opinions, way of life. Uh, I can share the stories of my people and tell that uh, Filipinos are worth reading for and worth writing for. 
uh, I really like to write because that's the only place and the, the only platform I can feel that I'm really Eros Atalia and I can really tell a part and parcel of the Filipino consciousness and sensibilities. The downside, in our country, it's very hard to make a decent living out of writing. So you have to have a, a eight to five job and sometimes you have to market yourself before the uh, your readers. Sometimes you, 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 you tend to, to follow sometimes the trends in the market uh, and and because books are very expensive uh, you have to lament that sometimes your work your book is being photocopied and bind by some readers and sometimes um, they took picture of my books and share it in public or turn into pdf uh, but I guess it's much better than, than no one reads you at all. Tatlong, tatlong gabi, tatlong araw, or three nights and three days, uh, 60 or 70 percent of which, based on my experience in print media as a tabloid reporter, and uh, it's, uh, uh, I wrote the, the, the big corruption in the mass media and in the environment, in the government, and uh, it, because it, I think not because it gone, uh, it gained some awards the the Palaka most prestigious literary award in the Philippines, but because this one is almost one closest to my heart because uh, I think I succeed in writing some frightening stories because in the Philippines I'm known to be very humorous, so I challenge myself to write something frightening something. Hor uh, horror-based stories. Um, I remember when Stephen King said that for you to, to frighten others, you have to make yourself frightened first. And um, I, I made it very clear that um, in my story that it's much better to die running after what you really like than die running away from what you don't really like. I wrote this Tatlong gabi, tatlong araw, or three nights and three days. Now it will become a film when I get back in the Philippines. I hope so. And um, uh, I guess this novel almost legitimized me for being a literary writer in the Philippines. Because in the Philippines, you have to have certain awards and critic recognition for them to recognize you as a legitimate or literary writer. That's why this novel is really close to my heart. I really like to share this mentor of mine. Uh, he's like a father to me and a father to all of us, to all of us writing in Filipino, in fiction Filipino. He's the father of postmodern writing in the Philippines, Jun Cruz Reyes, uh, almost IWP, uh, alumni in writing in Filipino and fiction. We owe our craft from him. Uh, he taught us not just to write very well, but to be a good Filipino, to be a good human being. Uh, he don't know how to package himself. He, he's not a politician. He's not with the big literary luminaries here because he doesn't influence the, the result. He, he is very uh, secluded, and, but he always give himself to the young writers, to the uh, literary enthusiasts. So I owe my career, my writing career to him. His short story, Utos ng Hari, or King's Degree, published 1974 is a landmark in the Philippine literary history because before 1974 all of our writings are grim and determined or flowery words about beauty about love blah 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 or so much about activism but when he published that story four decades ago uh, that you can picture the 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 the, the pain and and suffering of Filipino through humor, and it triggered the 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 new wave of writing fiction in the Philippines because of him. I would rather ask the government to support the farmers, fisher folks, ordinary people, because they feed the nation, and 
Of course, writer can always demand that we're the most important people in our country. Come on. But I don't think so. Uh, there is big... Now, there is a developing uh, movement in the Philippines. Uh, little by little, the government is helping writers to publish their work. Uh, give government giving grants to some writers. Uh, not to work for one year, they will give you salary for one year, then just you just have to work. But the thing is, there is this small circle, we call it literary mafia, who will always get the awards, who will always get published, who will always get this grant. And you have to come from these big literary circles or universities. Uh, because the aesthetics in and the aesthetics and the standards of literature are dictated or being determined by this institution and these workshops. So it's very hard for young writers to penetrate or to break into the, break the circle uh, if you don't pay respect to these giant institutions or literary luminaries. And that's the dilemma of, of the Filipino or young writers. Uh, that's why they created a, 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 an alternative platform for them to be published, for them to be read, and for them to write without knocking the gates of these literary institutions. Wattpad is such a wonderful creation and application that they can share the stories without the highbrow um, intervention of the academes. I'm very thankful for this opportunity to the University of uh, Iowa and IWP for giving me this opportunity to, to know the United States of America, particularly Iowa City and the, the wonderful people around. I noticed that everybody's smiling, everybody say hi, hello, great, amazing. Uh, even though you just order for uh, egg and will, they will ask you, sunny side up or uh, uh, well done? Sunny side up, good, great, well, amazing. That's, that's good. And thank you for the opportunity because I wrote around 80 pages now as of this moment of my novel. Uh, when I have this moment, I try my very best to finish. Uh, if I can spare and get away with parties, then I'll do so because I can write. Because I had so much parties in my life. I can, I can always do that in my country. But I never miss cinematic, public lecture, reading, activities of IWP. Just like what Leo Buscaglia said in his famous book, Living, Loving, and Learning, the opposite of love is not hate, but apathy. It's not giving a damn.